Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem paint house. And I do want to mention that this is a premium problem on leak code, but you can actually solve this problem for free. If you go to this website, Lint Code, you can actually find this problem for free and solve it there if you'd like. I'll put the link in the description below if you want to do that. But I will be solving this on Leak Code because I do have Leak Code Premium at the moment. And so the problem is we are given a row of N houses and each house can be painted one of three colors. It can be painted red, blue or green and we don't really have to worry about the colors but it happens to be that for each color that we do paint it one of these three colors there's a different cost associated with painting it that particular color and we have a rule that any two adjacent houses have to be different colors we cannot paint them the same color and so we're given an n by three a matrix basically which is representing the cost right for each house n right there's n different houses it could be one of three colors so the n by three basically comes from any particular cost right and given these costs and knowing that any two adjacent houses have to be the, a different color what is the minimum cost it would take us to paint all of the n houses so for example let's just take a look at uh, down here so this is the first house this is the second house and this is the third house so for the first house we can paint it one color which will cost 17 a second color which will cost two a third color which will cost 17. so let's just take the uh you know this color so if we take this color the middle color then for the next house uh, we know that the, since this house is adjacent to this one, we cannot choose this middle color again, right? So now we have to choose between this or this, and we'll take the five. And again, now we're here, right? We're at the next house. Now for this, this third house, we can choose this middle color because our previous house only used this rightmost color. So we cannot use this color, but we can choose either of these two. We're going to choose three, and this happens to be the minimum solution to plus five plus three which means the total minimum cost happened to be 10. now obviously there's going to be a lot of different ways we can paint the houses right obviously for the first house we have three different choices but for the next house we have two choices because we can't paint it the same color as the previous house and then the next house again we'll have two choices two choices two choices etc etc so roughly if we do the brute force the time complexity is going to be two to the power of n n is the number of houses that's how many different ways we could paint the houses and of course we want the minimum cost so from all these different ways we'll have to find the minimum that's not very efficient but Going down this train of thought, we can actually find a more efficient solution, and eventually we'll find a solution that is linear time complexity and constant memory complexity. Let me show you that solution now. So let's look at the decision tree and see if we can notice any kind of sub problem that we can use and maybe try to cache that sub problem and see what we can you know, improve. So we know we have N houses and for this example, we have three houses, zero, one, two. And for this decision tree, we're gonna be seeing what we can do. So for the first house, we can either choose to you know, paint the cost that is 17, the next one, which is two, or the third one, which is also 17, right? So these are the choices we have for house zero. So for house one, if we chose 17, let me choose a different color. So if we chose 17, that means we cannot choose the first 16, but we can choose 16 and five. So for house number one, we can uh, paint it with 16 or we can paint it with five. For this path, if we chose two, that means we have to choose either 16 or five, then we can do that. And if we did 17, the last one, that means we have to choose between the first two colors, which are 16 and 16. And lastly, if we chose 16 for this house, or rather if we chose the middle 16, then we cannot paint the house number two or the third house with this three. So then we have to choose 14 or choose 19. And we can basically continue this with every single one of these paths until we get to the base case. Of course, this is one base case. This is another uh, solution. 
but we want to find the minimum and we could do that. But basically I drew this out so we could try to identify a sub problem. So obviously for the, for the house zero, we could have chosen index zero for the color to paint it. We could have chosen index one for the color, or we could have chosen index two for the color, right? So that's three different sub problems, right? And as we go down, right, we see, okay, for house one, we can either paint it the color 16, I guess that's index one, or we could have done five, which is index two, right? And notice we kind of repeated that, right? Like this, right? Like this, this whole row, right? Obviously, you know, one, we're passing in two parameters for the sub problem, right? The house number, let's, we have two parameters for the sub problem. One is H, right? Let's use that for the house number, right? So, you know, here we have house number zero and we have, we're passing in an index I for what is the color that we're going to paint it, right? Index zero, index one, index two, right? Now in the second row, for house number one, how many different colors could we possibly paint it? Same thing, right? Either zero, one, or two, right? For the color in the array up above, right? The costs color. So then over here though, you notice we have six different sub problems. So obviously some of the sub problems are repeating, right? This sub problem is the same as this sub problem. And the 16s are also the exact same. Now it's a little bit confusing because we have two different 16s here, but even if it was a different value, it would still, you know, we would still have repeating sub problems uh, over here, right? So that's what we're eliminating with caching. We can eliminate the sub problem. It's just a little bit difficult to kind of identify the sub problem, but we've identified it. Basically the house number is one parameter and the index I of the cost is another parameter. And this index I could only be between values zero to two, right? Because we only have three different colors. We could possibly paint the houses. So how big is our cache going to be? It's basically going to be N times three, basically the exact same size as our costs array or our costs matrix. And so what exactly does that sub problem represent? So for example, if I cached something like this, if I cached a uh, house number one and color number zero, what does that mean? Well, first of all, this is that sub problem over here. Like for example, this path, right? House number one, this is house number one and the color is zero or I guess in this case, the color is one, but it's, you know, 16 is the same in zero and one. So it's pretty much, this is, this is that sub problem. So what does it mean? What exactly does this tell us? It basically tells us, okay, if we started at house one and then painted all of the remaining houses starting from house one, and we painted house one with this particular color, color zero, let's say, then what would be the minimum cost, right? So that's what we're cashing in this case. What would it be? It's either going to be 16 plus 14 or 16 plus 19. Of course, the minimum is 16 plus 14. So that's what we're going to end up cashing in this position. As you can see, since we're allowed to cash, why do we even have to do the entire decision tree in the first place? We can do a true dynamic programming solution. And that's what I'm going to show you next. So like I said, we can use an n by three grid. Of course, n happens to be three, so it's a little bit more confusing, but obviously we could have three or extra houses, right? And then we would extend this uh, grid in that direction. But in this case, we don't. So when we do this grid, we're going to be solving the problem bottom up. So we could start at the bottom, right? Basically solve the sub problem. Okay. If we were starting at house two, doing all the remaining houses, of course, we only have one house starting at index two, then what would be the minimum cost to paint this house starting at each particular color? If we painted it zero, what would be the minimum cost? If we painted it one, what would be the minimum cost, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when we're actually writing the code, you know, we could start bottom up or we could even do top down in this uh, grid for this particular problem. So I'm just going to start at the top. And so basically we're changing the sub problem from, okay, if we started at house zero and did every house before house zero, what would be the cost? And then once we get to house two, we'll know, okay, if we started at house two, painted it color zero, what would be the, the minimum cost from, for painting every house, including house two and every house before house two? So let's start at house zero. If we painted house zero with color zero, what would be the minimum cost? Of course, this is the base case, right? 17 is gonna be the cost. Now, if we painted it color one, the cost is gonna be two. If we painted it 
color two, the cost is going to be 17 again. So that was basically our base case. Now it's going to get a little bit more interesting. So now we're at house one, right? What would be the minimum cost if we painted house one with color zero? Of course, it's going to be 16, right? 16 to paint this house alone. Plus, what are we going to add to it? Because we want to paint house one and we want to paint house zero as well. But if we just painted house one with color zero, then we have to paint house zero with color one or two. Which one are we going to choose? Of course, we're going to take the minimum, right? So we're going to look at these two values, two and 17. What's the minimum? Two is the minimum. So for here, we're going to say 16 plus two. In that case, it's going to be 18. 18 is the minimum cost it takes for us to paint both of these houses if we paint house one with color zero. Similarly, we can do that over here too. So if we painted uh, color one, it would be 16 plus the minimum of this and this, that's gonna be 16 plus 17, that's 33. And lastly, over here, if we painted house one with color two, it's gonna be five plus the minimum of these two, the minimum is two, so five plus two, that's gonna be seven. And now we're almost done, I'm gonna quickly run through it. So if we painted house two with color one, 14 plus the minimum of these two, that's gonna be 21. If we did three plus the minimum of these two, that's gonna be three plus seven, that's gonna be 10. And if we painted this house with this color, it's gonna be 19 plus minimum of these two, it's gonna be something like 37, I think. So now what value from this grid are we gonna return? Obviously we wanna paint all of the houses. This row tells us what would be the cost of painting all houses if we painted house two with this color, if we painted house two with color one, or if we painted house two with this color. We're, so basically we're gonna take the minimum of these three values. It happens to be 10. So 10 is gonna be the result. And you can see that matches up with what the solution says. And so we did this in O of N times three time complexity. So big O of N, basically that's the time complexity. Of course, the, the memory complexity happened to also be O of N times three, right? But we can actually, if you noticed, each time we used a row, like when we're computing this row, we only needed the previous row, right? We didn't need the entire matrix. So when I actually code this up, I'm gonna do an optimization. I'm gonna just be maintaining a single row at a time. I'm gonna, ma I'm gonna maintain this row, then I'm gonna compute all three values in the next row, then I'm gonna you know, delete this row and just maintain this row in memory and then delete this row and then maintain this row in memory. And then once we actually return the solution, I will just take the maximum of the last row that we computed and then return that value. I think I said maximum, but we obviously actually want the minimum cost, right? So we're gonna return the minimum of this row. Now we can actually code it up. Now let's code it up and just to give a comment. So our input costs two dimensional array. The first index is gonna represent what house it is. The second index is gonna represent the color. Uh, that's just a clarifying comment for myself. So we are gonna maintain a row. I'm just gonna call it DP uh, because I'm lazy as usual. And it's gonna be initialized with three values. We're gonna just initialize them with zeros but we could also initialize it with the first row of our costs array, but we don't really have to. We're just gonna iterate through every single, uh, basically house. So every single length of cost, every single house. And for every single house, we wanna know, you know, that DP thing that I basically told you. So we're gonna compute the next row. So DP of zero, basically, if we painted house I with color zero, what would be the minimum cost to do that? So basically, we're gonna say costs of I at index zero, because zero is the color that we're painting it, right? J is the color that we're painting it, plus the minimum of DP of one and DP of two right? Because this is the cost for painting the previous house. Of course, in the first case, the previous house was just zero. So it's, you know, going to be pretty simple. But then when we go to the next iteration, it will have the actual updated value. I'll tell you why, because we're going to be obviously computing DP of one and DP of two as well. And once we're done with that, we're going to update our DP. We're going to update this entire row and reassign it to these three values, DP zero, DP one, DP two. 
basically what I explained in the drawing picture. So we're going to compute DP1 the same way. This is if we painted house I with color 1. So obviously the cost of painting at color 1 plus the cost of painting all remaining houses with the two available choices that we have. So DP of 0 and DP of Two. So the re the way I got this DP of zero and DP of two is because we obviously can't paint the previous houses with the same color one, right? We can't paint the previous house with the same color, so we're choosing the different ones. And with the last uh, color, DP two, we can do the exact same thing and take the minimum of the two previous colors, but not two. So DP of zero and DP of one. So basically, we're doing what we did in that two-dimensional matrix that I showed, computing the row, then reassigning the row. So we're obviously only keeping one row in memory, so that kind of reduces the overall memory that we need. And once we're done with this entire thing, our result should be in this DP array of size 3, and we're just going to return whatever the minimum value happens to be in that DP array. And I ran it and you can see that it works and it's pretty efficient. This is about as efficient as you can get for this problem. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.